January 13th, 2018, 8.07 a.m., a message went out to everyone in the state of Hawaii. The worst message you can possibly receive. Not a dear John, no. Ballistic missiles are incoming, this is not a drill, take cover. This ended up being a false alarm, but what if it wouldn't have been? If a thermonuclear weapon went off right now, today, in your city, what would happen? Would you be able to survive? Is the 1950s PSA of duck and cover and Bert the turtle actually good advice or is it just false hope? The history of the use of nuclear weapons is a short one. Only two in 1945 to defeat the Axis. Hundreds of thousands of people were killed or injured in those attacks. However, many people did in fact survive. Those weapons are incredibly small compared to any normal nuclear weapon of today. Now there are three basic different types of attacks done with nuclear weapons. The first one is the classic, the one that we all think about. The world is over. Thermonuclear warfare, complete strategic bombings, 1,600 missiles coming from Russia, 1,600 missiles coming from the United States, hundreds more from submarines and dropped from airplanes. Everything destroyed, the world turned to glass. However, you can actually survive, and the government prepared for that scenario. The second, a tactical nuclear strike. This was popular in the Cold War by military brass, hoping to just have specific one target, two targets, using a nuclear weapon as a deterrence or preventing the enemy from taking an area. Sort of what Russia is currently threatening in Ukraine. And the last option, a probably small nuclear weapon, whether a dirty bomb or a suitcase nuke, set off in a city, not to cause a world war, not to end the world, but just to cause chaos and havoc. Of these three different options, the first one is probably the most likely, total nuclear annihilation. Because the second one really isn't very likely because it's probably gonna lead to the first. So in this scenario, the Cold War fear is finally here. Nuclear weapons are inbound, and you get an alert on your phone. You might have 30 minutes, you might only have a few seconds. It all just depends on if that nuclear weapon is coming from the Russian steppe or a submarine off the coast. The first thing you want to do, if you have any time, is get inside. Not some sort of modernistic building full of glass, but a solid concrete or brick building. Dense, as deep as you can go into the basements or into the center of the building where there are no windows around. Now this is where duck and cover, the 1950s PSA, and Bert the Turtle actually come in handy. You do want to duck and cover if there's some sort of desk, try and get under it. Not so much from the nuclear blast, but from the collapsing building. Tornado rules apply here. After the explosion, the pressure wave, the radiation, there will be a firestorm, as well as possible building collapsing. So getting under a table, up against a wall, anything like that will protect you from those collapses, hopefully. Something else that you want to do is cover up as much skin as possible. If you have a hood, raise it up, because the least amount of skin exposed, the better, as the fire and light from the blast can permanently burn you, as well as nuclear fallout getting into your hair. You also want to cover your nose and mouth with a wet cloth, if possible. Close your eyes and open your mouth. This will help prevent overpressurization that would burst your eardrums. Now, it's still possible that you're going to be deaf and blind after the explosion and pressure wave, but these will give you the best chance of hopefully being able to prevent that. You've got to subscribe and survive the nuclear apocalypse. Let's say you hit the nuclear jackpot and you survive all those things. Things are actually gonna be much harder than you'd think because most people think that one nuclear weapon is gonna hit one city, that's not how it works. Because there's 1600 nuclear weapons coming in, besides the strategic targets that they wanna hit, military bases, other missile sites, they're also gonna be hitting major metropolitan centers with multiple missiles. And on each missile has between eight and 14 warheads because of multiple independent re-entry vehicles or MIRVs meaning that your chances of survival are pretty low, but not impossible. However, if you survive the initial attack, you could survive. You can make it, I believe in you. You only have about 10 minutes before nuclear fallout starts to rain from the sky. This is tiny, minuscule dust or sand, all radioactive. Depending if the weapon goes off in your ground level or up in the sky will depend on how much fallout there is. Most of the missiles will be airburst to cause the most amount of damage. So you have 10 minutes to get somewhere better than you are right now. If you're already in somewhere pretty good, stay put. That's your best option. You're gonna need water, you're gonna need food. Cell phone's not gonna work. Because of the electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, it's going to destroy basically all electronics. Basic radios and hand crank radios do survive, probably just because of how basic the technology inside them is. Now, when we're talking about water, bottled water or anything that isn't open to the elements is best because if it's been exposed to air, 
it would have been filled with nuclear radioactive fallout. Bottled waters, water heaters, the tank behind the toilet are all places that you can find water unexpectedly. However, you can also do something similar that they would do in any kind of natural disaster. Filling up your bathtub, if you have big plastic totes from Walmart, like basically everybody I know, you fill those up with water, anything you can do, because the pipes underground will be safe for a short time period until they become contaminated from broken pipes or from the water source in the aquifer that would be contaminated. Next, you're gonna to wanna to slowly take off all your clothes, anyone around you as well. Clothing prevents up to 90% of radioactive contamination. And so you're gonna to wanna to go real slow and try and not let any of the radioactive dust or particles to come off. Your clothes themselves will be radioactive. And so you wanna put them in some sort of container that if you can seal, the better, and put it as far away from you as possible. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take soap and water and clean yourself thoroughly. You're gonna to wanna to clean all the creases and crevices of your body, your eyes, everything. If you were with a partner, you're gonna get a little bit intimate with each other, making sure that you are clean from radioactive material so that you and others don't die. An important thing to remember is that conditioners and lotions, because they are not hydrophobic, will actually stick to the radioactive material and that radioactive material will then stick to you. Do not use any kind of conditioners or lotions. None of that two-in-one shampoos, boys, not today. You don't wanna scratch your skin at all because the radioactive dust can get inside and your skin is a great protective layer. So don't try and do any of that exfoliating. Baby wipes or paper towels with water would work in a cinch. I would imagine urine as well, but I have no evidence to find that. I couldn't find anywhere, but I imagine that would be better than just letting radioactive material sit on your skin. The nuclear apocalypse is not a time to feel icky. Next, you're gonna to wanna to cover all your doors, your vents, your windows with plastic, with duct tape. Try and fully seal that in. Because this radioactive dust is dust, it can pick up and it can go into your shelter. Next, you're gonna to wanna to stay inside. You're gonna to wanna to stay inside as long as you possibly can. Half-life of fallout is actually really short. The first 24 to 48 hours, depending on the type of fallout that we're dealing with, could be reduced by 80%. However, the longer you wait, the better, because even 80%, even 99% reductions in radioactive fallout can still kill you. Your best case scenario is at least two weeks, which seems like a long time. However, if you're really rationing well, hopefully you could survive. At two weeks, 99% of the radiation will be gone, which is probably about the same time period that many of the rescue crews and emergency personnel, if any still survive, would come in to the contamination zone. Possible that they would try and come in earlier than that, but their chances of dying from radiation would be severe. Because no personnel will be coming in to save you at this point, it's important to just stay put and try and prevent yourself from being exposed to any more radiation. Now we know that radiation can give you cancer and kill you. However, you could still potentially survive 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Many of the people from the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings still survived and lived into their 90s and hundreds even. So it's still possible to live a full and awesome life post-nuclear apocalypse. So don't give up. Something that's kind of weird is the first organizations from the government that will be back up and ready is gonna be the post office and the IRS. The post office, because they know exactly where you live. And so they're going to go door to door, figuring out who's still alive and seeing if they can reconnect people with their families. And the IRS, because they have an entire system to determine tax liability of your nuclear damaged home. As Benjamin Franklin said, thing is sure, but death and taxes. Good luck survivors, you can do it. This video isn't to scare you. It's just to make you kind of think a little bit. This is things that people were thinking about during the Cold War. While less than 1% of the American population ever built an actual bomb shelter, while it seems like it's almost impossible to be able to survive something like the nuclear apocalypse, during the Cold War, the US government did many studies to show that you could actually survive the nuclear apocalypse. And these are some of your key ways in the initial moments after a nuclear blast on how to do that. Stay safe and subscribe to survive.